Um, also, one thing I completely forgot to do. Um, who are you and what did you do for the short? <laughs> Introduce yourself. So please. I, um, <laughs> so I'm Claire Saunders. Um, and I built the the film, the, all of the stuff that is in the film. I put, made the. <laughs> you made it. The night that we came up with the idea, um, we were in a lounge at school. We were talking about creative projects that we had worked on. I happened to bring up that I had done these little miniature diorama sets. Caroline went, oh my god, the diorama stuff is just what I was having in my brain for this short film. Through the Power of Friendship is one project. Designing, my design process is, it's a little bit of an exaggeration to call it a design process. I don't do a lot of planning. But generally, I knew that I was not going to be able to sculpt a rabbit head in a way that looked how I wanted it to look. And so I knew that I was going to have to use a like toy rabbit head from somewhere. The scale of everything else essentially was determined by how big that rabbit head was. I didn't build the full model of Sweet Pea until later, but I started with the thing that I cut the head off of to get the rabbit head. And I went, okay, comparatively, how big does her bedroom need to be? With the other stuff, I start with what I'm building stuff out of. Heads historically have built the like walls and floors and ceilings of my sets out of like cardboard boxes but i kept running into, into an issue with that because cardboard kind of sucks to paint because it warps so much so in this project i ended up using i, had, I realized that i had a really an old um fold poster boards and that warps less so i built stuff out of that because so i really like to reuse stuff i have a room in my house that is like the art studio and in it i have a whole collection of old stuff that i don't want to get rid of that I said, I'll use this eventually. But it's also like those mini M&M tubes and a broken French press machine. And the, but here's the thing, I do use them. The biggest thing that made me not getting rid of stuff worth it in this project, and I'm gonna talk more individually about the sets later, but while we're on the topic, I was really struggling to figure out how to build a wire bed frame, but dealing with wire itself was gonna be really hard. It was gonna be hard to paint. It was gonna be just a pain to work with. I was gonna, my fingers were gonna hurt like a bitch. It was not gonna be a fun time. Um, and what I realized that I could use instead is when I was in, I wanna say sixth grade, for my birthday, I got one of those 3D plastic pens where you put hard plastic into one end and it's like a hot glue gun and it like melts the plastic that hardens and you can draw it into shapes. And I used it very briefly and then embarrassingly essentially dropped it. But I did keep it and all of the materials I had with it so that when I was making this bed, I could use my 3D plastic pen to make a wire bed frame. The first challenge, at least, that I experienced is I pulled out my sewing machine that I hadn't used for seven, eight years. I spent a lot of time trying to use my sewing machine to like make Sweet Pea's clothes and make her like blanket. And it was so frustrating because it was so small. But I was like, I've got to be able to do this. This cannot be this hard. Turns out it is. But the worst of this is when I spent probably eight hours in a day trying to make a quilt um, for her bed. And it was just not working. Like, like a one inch by two inch quilt. Genuinely, I had it because I was measuring it out. I had a, I, I was doing like math and geometry. I spent at least eight hours on this day. I needed it to work. Um, obviously, eventually it did not. And I eventually did just be like, I am just going to make a blanket for her bed. But that was a hurdle. And with Sweetie's clothes as well, she was originally gonna have two outfits. Making clothes that simultaneously fit her properly 
while also being able to be taken on and off was proved to be impossible essentially. Either they could like look normal on her body or they were gonna or they could be taken off. And so that was hand sewn because I essentially sewed it onto her body. Fabric was a big challenge, but I did persevere. Um, I did have to lose my vision of a quilt, but it's all worth it in the end um, because it looks better now than the vision I had in my head originally. I realized after Christmas that I had to go back to school on January 3rd and their stuff was not done. The woods were not finished. Mr. I had not been built. Ms. Lips did not exist. I think maybe I had, no, the hallway had not been built at all. So that was a lot of things that I had to do. This is the, con this is the consequences of me not planning my time. Um, the pros and cons you mentioned earlier. A lot of the timeline was not planned out, which has its pros and cons. Did cause a little bit of a rush at the end. The, the con pros being. and cons. So the con was that I had a lot of stuff to do, but it was very, it was fun. Other than me dealing with fabric, which is a thing that I have a little bit of beef with. I do like doing these, these things. I think in total, I spent, I think I would say at least, in total it was upwards of a hundred hours. I was gonna say 150. Yeah. Upwards of probably 150 hours on it, um, especially considering those days at the end. When I thought of this, I was so proud of myself, but essentially uh, Mr. I, I was having trouble standing him up in the forest. And so there's little cutout sticker magnets on the bottom of his shoes. And there's a magnet that sits um, below the felt that is on the bottom of the forest so that um, it's a lot easier to stand him because there's magnetics. Oh. Magnet is under here. And yeah. so then he goes here. No hands. Micro knitting. This might this this I think is a surprise because I is didn't. A surprise? I intentionally I made this a surprise. You're not ready for this. Oh, actually. tiny knitting. How did you do that? Pain and suffering is actually how I did this. <laughs> it was one of those things that I realized was like definitely possible. It just requires patience. And also, if I did this, it would make everybody else feel crazy. Namely, it would make Caroline feel crazy. Claire! So that was what? a surprise. I, it, it took a lot I'm of- I'm so surprised! It took- I um, put uh, embroidery floss on large needles and then I knit it. From the um, needles, I slid them onto smaller pieces of wire that were proportionately sized as like knitting needles. Um, so the knitting that Sweepy does is real. Pain and suffering is actually how I did this. One of my favorite things to do in miniatures and also something that I think is just like, not signature as in like, s nobody else has ever done this, but it is something that I do a lot in stuff like this. I love making things look moldy and dirty and gross. And specifically my favorite method of doing that is I have, that grass powder before this project what i discovered is that if you mix that you can mix that with paint or with shiny gloss that you would put on top of a painting if you mix that together um you get this like weird mold wet moss texture that i enjoy putting on everything Like I said, the first thing that I knew for Sweet Pea is that she, I wasn't going to be able to make a rabbit head with this level of detail. What I did have is I had a very small rabbit figurine. So I managed to get the head off of it so that I could put it onto a like child Barbie. Yeah, so that is what her like base body is made out of. I used air clay to sort of do the seams and some stuff like around her neck area that I think mostly ended up being covered up, but it's good to like have that. Um, I also wanted her knees to be movable and bendable so that she could sit properly. The Barbie body did not actually do that. Um, and so what I did is I cut her legs in half and then I stabbed wire into the bottom part of her leg and the top part of her leg. And that was harder than I imagined because the plastic was harder than I imagined. But the great thing about plastic is that when it's too hard, you can make it hot and then it melts and then it's a lot easier to stab. Don't try this at home. Um, I have inhaled burning plastic through this project. Don't do that.
<laughs> it's it I didn't willingly yeah. listen. I didn't ask you to you do You didn't that. ask me to do this. I did this myself. <laughs> all of their like uh, her like uniform, the black part of her uniform, essentially all of the like suit material things are made out of a old blazer that I had. And then her sweater is made out of the same material as her bed sheets, um, which is a set of old dish towels that I have. She's so little and and she's little. Go to sleep, my darling. Ms. Lips is she's the simplest. She had took the least amount of work to do because she's the least DIY'd. We had this vision in the planning stage of she just has Barbie legs and a dress on. And that does not require a lot of DIY when you have a lot of old Barbies and Barbie clothes. She didn't actually fit in the shoes because the shoes are newer and this Barbie is older. And so that was a bit of a struggle, which is why part one of the reasons that she cannot stand up on her own. Oh, baby. I love Sweet Pea because she's the main character and because she's so little. But I do think that Miss that Mr. I is probably the one that I am most proud of, and I think that's because I did him last. And so I had I learned from the previous two things. But essentially, I just made his body out of wire, and then for joint for parts that were not joints, I covered it in air dry clay so it would be the right like thickness. I really liked making a suit actually. You can sort of barely end up seeing it beyond the blazer but I, he it is like a three-piece suit i did give him a vest under this he's got this like collared shirt situation the tie that is very similar to the other purple that is for sweet pea throughout the film but i did make it a little bit darker one thing that i am most proud of with him is that i wanted to give him little buttons and i figured out that if i used a little bit of the like gloss stuff and i just put a little dot on it then it looked like these little buttons that he has on his suit I am really proud of the way that the eyeball turned out. Um, and I think that part of that is most of the art that I do that is not this is painting. And I think that, that having that background and the ability to combine the skills helps both of those things. Yeah, so one of the things that I thought Part of just like as a challenge to myself, it was gonna be more boring for me to just make a box for the room. So I figured that I could do these moving walls so that we could get these different filming angles um, and have it open and close like this so that we could record here and then we could also get this wall. That was one of the first things that I thought of that I was very proud of myself for thinking of. Another thing that I also particularly am proud of that doesn't oh because in many shots is I have the you know the popcorn ceiling texture and I was enjoyed painting that aspect of it in general I really liked figuring out the this room um I did this painting behind the wallpaper wallpaper is just straight up printer paper like I talked about I have all these collaged pieces that she's hung up um this one's kind of hard to see but I really like back here all of the wood stuff in here including the nightstand um and the wood that is on the window is all popsicle sticks because they're super easy to work with. Um, and the window, that lo does look very similar to the window that is in my studio um, because that's what I looked at when I was building it. So also in the in the bedroom, um, I didn't tell Caroline I was doing this, it was a little bit of a surprise. <gasps> oh no, she got a little scuffed. Oh, Did it's she? It's okay, she can be fixed. Oh, it's okay. I wanted to make it clearer when it goes from night to day. So I built this little window, and in the window, it um, can go from day to night using this little thing. Um, and I got the inspiration from that, from those things that you can um, turn to reveal different things, um, like different like animals or stuff like that at my local playground. And I remembered that, and I thought it was applicable. Um, yeah, guys, take a seat and you can, you can talk through how they all look on the outside. Um, this one's a little bit more evident because it's a little bit messier on the outside. It's a little bit more evident than the Sweet Pea one. Anyone who's curious what these look like on the outside is silly and goofy because that is what the duct tape I had was. This 
is the hallway. I'll, I'll start with the outside and then I'll go into it. So doing the outside of this was a challenge. And the biggest challenge with that is that um, Mrs. Lips is not proportional to Sweet Pea at all um, because of the things that they are made out of and just how it turned out. The door was going to need to be big enough that Ms. Lips looked normal in it, but I needed it to not, to still look like it was in Sweet Pea's room and proportional for her room, which would not make sense unless you did what I did and took the same wallpaper document on my computer and scaled it up by a certain amount and then printed that out. So this print is bigger than the wallpaper in Sweet Pea's room because the whole thing is bigger. I think that it makes it look a lot more cohesive between the sets, um, which is what I wanted it to, what, which is what I wanted to happen. So as part of myself with me in that one, the door from Sweet Pea's room to the hallway, the boards on the door is like a little bunny head. Um, and so it's her room and it's her like domain. All of the wood parts of this, like I said, are popsicle sticks. And also, I mean, part of the texture is painted on, but also I wanted to get this like green texture. So that opens, that's just taped on here. I just painted it. It didn't need to be real hinges. The uh, One of the other um, challenges that I came across in this, I ran out of felt, and the, the felt that I was using for the carpet. And I needed to get more felt for the hallway went to Michael's and then they were out of that color felt. <laughs> this, this could only happen to you. This is the situa this situ situations I am in. So what I did is I bought the closest color and then I painted over it until I felt like it matched enough. But that was a challenge for the carpet that is in here and throughout here. And then we get to the inside. Um, and one of the things that we talked about in the planning stages of this um, was that we wanted walls of this hallway to curve inwards and like downwards. So it had like the correct, like unsettling energy to it. Um, and it felt stifling and bad and weird and scary. The way I ended up deciding to do that was just the walls and the inside of the hallway are just made of very thick watercolor paper. Once again, printed out the wallpaper and then did baseboards with the same paper on it. The roof does come off. As a fun, as a fun, fun fact. That's how we got Mrs. Lips that's hot how, glued in there. Oh yeah, she was hot glued. That's yeah, a fun sorry, fact. that is a fun fact. So because Miss Lips cannot stand up on her own, she is typically hot glued into right here. <laughs> um, because she doesn't need to move and she needs to stay in the same place. I totally just moved the table a little bit, whatever. It will not look the same. It's fine. The woods is my favorite the way it turned out. It was it was my favorite and also the one that looks least like I expected it to look. Going into it, I had planned on using mostly those pre-made diorama trees and pl like plants and bushes. Though they don't make those very big though. And as I've said so many times in this project, how hard could it be to do that myself? Um, and so, the vast majority of the woods is air dry clay. This slope upwards, the trees, rocks, and this like stump and everything, and the roots, all air dry clay, baby. This structure was just used to hold it up while it was drying, so now it's there. And I love that it's there because um, in the reveal shot, it will really make it yeah, look like a set. It looks, it looks like a, like a play. Yeah. You could hang a park hand from that. Oh, for sure. So I think the moment that it was really like, because initially, like I had, I put all this air dry clay on here, but it wasn't coming together how I wanted it to come together. And so I went back to look at our notes. Caroline had written a list of like the main vibes of every room. And one of the things that I had forgotten she had written down under forest was wet in all caps, like triple underlined. That's the, that was the secret ingredient that it was missing. And then what I did, is I went in with Mod Podge and like the clear glossy stuff that is all over this project. And I created these like puddles in these certain places and essentially covered it in everything. It sort of has this like just rain vibe to it. It was one of the sets that um, received most of the damage in shipping, but she survived and she's my favorite and I love her. Is this in the frame? Yeah. So the transition shot was um, was a an experience. It was a learning experience. It was a um, it objectively turned out good. If I do say so myself. 
I um, have my own personal thoughts and feelings about whether or not it turned good, but I must remind myself with all creative endeavors that it looks better to everybody else. When Caroline pitched the shot to me, what I immediately did is, and this was still when we were at school, what I immediately did is I went back to my room and I made a prototype out of paper of like a way that I thought it could work. And it's not too different from that. For the, the way that this works is that there is, the, the entire set moves um, on top of this track and Sweet Pea is held on this little stand that, that stays in one spot as the everything else moves around her. The stars are just this, I'll turn this around actually. It's literally behind the scenes. So there's this, essentially, um, I don't know how to get normal gears, so everything is Lego gears in my house. There's this pulley that has this string on it that just goes up to where the stars are. This just holds it, this is just elastic that holds it in place. And then I can go up and down. I'm using these little pony beads to keep it the string how I wanted it to look. She is a machine that must be tamed. Back to the main mechanism of it. It's just a, this weird cart that uses, um, again, Lego wheels. Um, it has a little bit of a weight of a like imbalance problem, which is why I've attached all of these little weird marbles that I had at my grandma's house, because otherwise it's super back heavy. So this is how she goes from in the bed to outside of the bed. I essentially made a duplicate of the bed that was had the illusion of it being farther out so that she could sit in there. I originally was gonna have her go to standing up in the forest, but that was super not continuous. So instead, I had this idea to do this sort of paper cut scene looking at her from above, and that allowed me to intentionally be more minimalistic about how I was building this. Yeah, so then I built this little track for it. The track folds in half for shipping purposes. Yeah. And once again, all of this is the tri-fold poster board that everything here is made out of. The main thing that I learned from this is that um, planning is important. And as it turns out, when you try to build something that requires a sort of mechanical function and you don't plan enough beforehand, things will go wrong. But it is all a learning experience. And she does what she needs to do. And she looks good. She looks beautiful. She looks beautiful. Hello. And we learn something new every day. I, I mean, I think the biggest thing for me is that this kind of art that I do is not one that's super easy to show other people. It's nice to have people see a thing that you work hard on and acknowledge it. You know, traditional media, I think just in my experience, is it's a lot harder to get the same kind of like attention on it, particularly with sculpture. It's like, it's not super easy thing to like show online or post or show other people generally. Having a way to present this and having a way to like show it to other people that is faster and easier and like gets people looking at it more than like a picture of it might. Um, and so having having a way to show this kind of art and seeing that come together is awesome. I really like websites and I really like it, the internet and I, um, I've grown to really like web design and so I did some personal website, website design stuff. Um, and then when we started this project, yeah, we're gonna put, you know, this is gonna be on like YouTube and whatnot, but I didn't want this to be something that could become completely reliant on something like YouTube or something. Even if the vast majority of people who are watching it watch it on YouTube, I wanted to have a way to watch the film that felt more individualized to the film itself. Kind of how like DVD menus are. And it's also fun. It's fun to have a online place to put information about the film and behind the scenes content and pictures. And I'm excited to put the film on its own place. If you want to do this kind of art, um, do it. <laughs> like that feels like an overly simplistic answer. And obviously there's like a, like I was able to purchase craft supplies for it but also there's i mean a lot of things i think that people assume are like 
natural gifts are just work at least in my in my experience it's not really like a thing that i'm just like naturally good at and i was born knowing how to build a door out of popsicle sticks it's work if yeah and if you want to try and build something you should um and when it comes to like people who do this kind of thing and are having trouble like knowing what to do with it or where to go with it honestly i wouldn't know what to do with this if i didn't have the sweet pea film situation for the first two three years i had this hobby is i just did it i mean that's what it is if you like doing it keep doing it and talk to people about it i wouldn't have been able to do anything with it if i didn't mention that i had done it tell people you do it even if it seems to you like it's not special or interesting um and you should be annoying about your hobbies. And also, friendship. <laughs> but power friendship! For the power of friendship, anything is possible. Do you want to come look at some footage? Oh, yeah. Also, this is almost finished. I'm just trying to fix a part of my boat. It's like say whatever I want. Oh. Look at it. You can read it. And then you can read it. Yeah. Yeah. Look at it. Look at it. Look at it. Shout out Michaels. Shout out Michaels. Here, let me scroll. Shout out Mike of Michaels.